Dobradan. I am Jessalyn. Let's dive into what's new in DevTools Chrome 121, 122, and 123. First up, debugging elements that disappear when you try to inspect them can be difficult. Here is a simple trick. You can enable the Emulate a Focus Page setting in the Styles tab. Let's say you need to debug the dynamic YouTube search dropdown. The moment you try to right-click and inspect it, it is gone. To understand why, let's observe the document.has focus state. The value is true when your cursor is on the page. However, the value becomes false when you move the cursor to DevTools because DevTools is not part of the page. It is common to show and hide based on the document's focus state. Enabling the Emulate a Focus Page setting in the Styles tab will always keep the document focus state as true, even when you move your cursor to DevTools. Woohoo! This time, you can inspect the dropdown successfully. Remember, this is a global setting, so you only need to enable it once. Previously, this setting was temporary and it is hidden under the lesser known rendering panel. Great news for web performance folks! There are three UX enhancements in the performance panel. Let's start with the handy breadcrumbs. Here is a performance trace. Previously, selecting a data range on the timeline could be confusing because the timeline itself wouldn't match the selected range. Now, you can truly zoom into the selected range, aligning the timeline with your data for clearer analysis. The ability to zoom in on data ranges goes even further. You can zoom multiple times, diving deeper into specific sections of your performance data, and jump between them with the breadcrumbs. This allows for a more granular understanding of performance issues. Whiskers are new additions to the interactions track in the performance panel, designed to improve your IMP debugging experience. IMP is a core web vital metric that measures your website's responsiveness to user interactions. It tracks the time between a user interaction, like clicking a button, and the next pane updated on the screen. For example, this whisker at the front shows a slight input delay between the button click action and when the browser handles the click event. This whisker at the back shows a longer presentation delay between the click event and the next UI update reflecting the interaction's effect. These whiskers provide visual cues for you to see the end-to-end -end INP timing for an interaction. The main track in the performance panel now comes with new connecting arrows. These arrows clearly show how events lead to one another, making it easier to understand the flow of your performance timeline. For example, this recalculate styles event is initiated by schedule style recalculation. Sometimes the connecting arrows stretch across very long distances, making it hard to see. No worries, clicking the initiator link in the summary tab will conveniently jump you to the corresponding event. These are the few common events where you will see the connecting arrows. Next, we have four improvements in the sources panel. Setting lock points just got easier. Log points are like console.log statements, but they don't pollute your code. Now, instead of right-clicking, simply hold Command Shift and click a line number to set a log point. This is especially valuable when debugging production code. By the way, the Enable and Disable All Breakpoints context menu is back in the Breakpoints section. These handy options allow you to quickly toggle all breakpoints across your file saving you time and effort. Another tiny update, did you notice the indentation marker is now on by default? This works seamlessly along with code folding, making it easier to follow the structure of your code. Debugging minified code just got easier. DevTools now supports evaluating source variables directly. Previously, you could only use the minified variables, which could be cryptic and hinder understanding. For example, your TypeScript code defines two variables named coffee and price. During the build process, these names get minified to N and O. Let's set a breakpoint and start debugging. Now, you can directly evaluate coffee in the console and get the correct value. Previously, the console would throw an error. 
even better, you can still evaluate the minified variable n. You should get the correct value as well. The same applies to other DevTools features like log points and life expressions. Here is a bonus tip. Did you know there are multiple ways to copy a URL in the network panel? In the network panel, right-click on any request and select copy. There are options to copy just one or all URLs as CURL, PowerShell, and Fetch. The copy command is now in your clipboard, ready to be pasted, edited, and run in your desired environment. What other copy functions would you like to see? Do you need a copy as Python script option? Leave your feedback and suggestions in the comments below. All right. That's all for today. Head over to our blog and explore all the latest updates. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Ciao!